March 20th, St. Wolfram. St. Wolfram was the son of an official in the court of King Dagbert. Some historians say his father was a knight. He was born around the year 640 and died in the year 703. Wolfram himself spent years in the court of King Clotaire III, but he occupied his heart only with God, despising worldly greatness as empty and dangerous and daily advancing in virtue. He renounced the world and took his priestly vow. He then donated his estate to the church, giving the land to the Abbey of Fontenelle in Normandy. He was nonetheless called back to court, where he served until his father died. Then, because the Archbishop of Sens also had recently died, he was chosen in the year 682 to replace him by the consent of the clergy and the people of that city. He governed that diocese for two and a half years with great zeal and sanctity. It was a tender compassion for the blindness of the idolaters of Friesland and the example of the zealous English preachers in those parts, which moved him then to resign his bishopric with proper advice and after a retreat at Fontanelle to enter Friesland as a poor missionary priest. On the voyage they made by water, the deacon who served him at the altar accidentally dropped the patent into the sea. St. Wolfram told him to place his hand where it had fallen on the waves, and it came up to him by a miracle. For long years that patent was conserved in the monastery of St. Wandrill. On this mission he baptized great multitudes, among them a son of their king, Radbod, and drew the people away from the barbarous customs of sacrificing humans to the idols. It was their custom to sacrifice children, normally of noble families, to the heathen gods by hanging or drowning in the sea. People would cast lots at festivals to pick a victim, and the loser was immediately hanged or cut to pieces. Wolfram appealed to King Radbod to stop the slaughter, but the king said it was their custom and he could not change it. He challenged Wolfram to rescue the victims if he could. Wolfram then waded into the sea to save two children who had been tied to posts and left to die in the rising tide. The turning point in his mission came with the rescue of Ovon. Ovon had been picked by a lot to be sacrificed by hanging. Wolfram begged King Radbod to stop the killing, but the commoners were outraged at the sacrilege. Wolfram eventually obtained an agreement that if Wolfram's god saved Ovan's life, Wolfram and the god could have the man. Ovon was hanged and swung from the rope for two hours, during which Wolfram prayed. When the heathens decided to leave Ovon for dead, the rope broke. Ovon fell and he was alive. Ovon became Wolfram's slave, his follower, a monk, and then a priest. The faith of these missionaries and their power to work miracles frightened and awed the people who turned from their old ways and were baptized. Even King Radbod converted, but just before his baptism, Radbod asked where his ancestors were. Wolfram told him that idolaters went to hell. I will go to hell with my ancestors, said the king, rather than be in heaven without them. However, later, near death, Radbon sent for St. Willibrod to baptize him, but he died before the saint's arrival. It was through St. Wolfram's great efforts that the religion of Christ began to take root in this pagan land, and many were converted by these prodigies. He retired to Fontanelli that he might prepare himself for death, and expired in peace there on the 20th of March in the year 720.